David, be honest. Have you seen the new Roadhouse movie? I'm going to lie to you. No, I'll be honest. I haven't. You haven't? Don't watch it. You know why? Because I've seen the old Roadhouse movie. It's not good. Conor McGregor's walking the time. He's like, yeah, it's me, Conor. Was he that bad? Was he that bad? It was bad. It was bad. I didn't expect much. I didn't expect much, but I was let down. And as a professional actor now, I can say that. There's just, there's some movies that should be remade. And some should not be. The original Roadhouse was awesome. Like, I, Jake Gyllenhaal's an incredible actor. Incredible actor. I'm surprised that he settled like that. Because it's just, it's not good. I, I mean, Blanier? I didn't think it was that bad of a movie. I thought it was okay. I think it was Connor terrible. was good in it? Yeah, I didn't expect Connor to go out there and, and be Ryan Gosling. I, I, didn't, I didn't expect that either, but I didn't expect him to go out there and be the worst actor I've ever seen in my life. Is that what he yeah, was? The, oh, the uh, whole movie, this is him. Your daddy said you're doing bad stuff. I'm just giving looks a like, pool stick. That lo- looks like you're having a smashing. That legitimately looks like Schmeagel. He was like a troll. Gollum. It's like a troll. And I love me some Conor McGregor, man. I just, I thought it was very, very average. And it should make in its mid segment. And it won't it because you think it's a little bit better than mid. That's yep. what you're saying. Correct. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. We preview the final four. We reacted some funny stuff. And as always, we entertain you. It's the Flame and Dragon Friday edition, and the under's going to hit of Cranny Cup. All right, everybody, thank you guys for joining us. Obviously, we are not live. We are coming back from our trip to Gainesville, Florida. It was a ton of fun. Want to give a shout-out to Yav. You can check all the content uh, throughout our uh, multiple channels that we have. We're going to be putting it out. Uh, just an absolute blast for a great cause, trying to save women's sports by keeping men out of it. I, I can't believe that's even a conversation. But we got some college basketball this weekend. Yes, we do. We got David Cohn, former Michigan quarterback, here to my left. Blaine Crane, former Western State Colorado wide receiver to my right. David, let's start UConn. Let's dive in. How are you feeling about it? UConn, I mean, we all know about UConn. Uh, defending national champion, won every game last tournament by double digits. And so far, didn't you say that they've been up at at least one point in every game this tournament by 30 points? Yes, they have been, they have been led by at least 30 points in every NCAA tournament. And we are the final four. Yeah. So that's round one. That's round two. That's Sweet 16, that's Elite Eight. That's four four helpings of belt to ass. Yeah, that's that like is. greatest team of all time territory if you can finish. And if we've seen finish. a lot of teams not be able to finish, finish, including an undefeated Kentucky team that didn't even make the national championship. On the other side, obviously, Alabama making their first Final Four. The line has gone up, though, boys. We did our uh, preview prediction and bets for this game. The line is now up to minus 12 UConn, and the over-unders come down a little bit. It so, has. right, it's minus 160 right now with no hook. Oh, God, I'm going to jump all over that one like a fat kid on a at a honey bun factory. Wow. Uh, and it's Friday, so y'all know who's sitting to my right. Play that graphic. Pieces flaming flacker. I am Dragon. Radio Sensei. Dragon. Me so sorry, but also not sorry. Uh, what's it at? One and a half. One and a half. Oh, we're doing this. We're doing this. Yes, we're doing this. Called an audible. Word. Called an audible. I love it. All right, so. Let's go keys to victory here. When I look at, at Alabama, to me, just in the grand scheme of things, what makes UConn so difficult is they do everything really, really well, right? You every, every team has that one thing they do really well. UConn does everything well. They can win games where they're not shooting well because of what they have in the front court with Klingon. Uh, they've got guards with you know Cam Spencer and, and Castle and those guys that rage in ages, but they're, uh, ages, but they're always effective. Everybody's going to talk about the three-point line for Alabama. I think you just have to literally try and run UConn as much as possible, and Alabama can do that. But also, you've got to somewhat stalemate them everywhere. Like, I don't think there's one wing that you can take out of the mega ranger that is UConn and say, all right, well, if we do this, we're definitely going to beat them. That's the problem. I don't know how many – I don't think UConn has a lottery pick right now. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know if they got any all-pro guys on the team right now. They're just a damn good basketball team. So everybody's talking about the threes, but can Nick Pringle, can Grant Nelson, can Deontay and, and all those guys, or Diabate, all those guys, 
somehow keep up with UConn by the rim, right outside the rim. It's not just going to be about three points. So what do you think, Dragon? I mean, we saw this Alabama team play North Carolina in person. Mm -hmm. They were the underdogs in that game. They shot 42% from three in that game. That was an 89-87 win. Well, this is one of the things where you're going against the best offense in the nation against probably one of the best defense in the nation. Um, I think a lot of it you have to do if you look at it. If you watch these last two Alabama games, Alabama's got a lot of offensive boards. Um, when you come with threes, you get a lot of long rebounds. Um, if, all, if Alabama can stay consistent in getting offensive boards against Connecticut and they can shoot well, there's no way Alabama wins this game if they don't come out hot early. Yeah, You're not going to come back against UConn. You're just not. You have to hit your threes well, and you know how, how, what defense is going to show up. Because right now, Alabama, before the postseason started, was ranked like 104th in defense, which is, I mean, absolutely terrible. So at this point, you got to shoot threes well. I just don't know how they're going to deal with the big from UConn. Do you double them? Um, I think you're going to have to. I don't know how healthy is Nick Pringle. Mm -hmm. um, Griffin's got to come out. And I think it all comes down to who got y'all there, Alabama? Mark Sears got y'all yeah. there, yeah. all right? Mark Sears has to be the best version of himself in this basketball game. He has to show up and show out. If Bama's hitting their threes, and one thing about UConn, if there is a weakness you can call, they do not turn people over. They do not turn the ball over on defense. They don't. One of the worst teams in basketball in doing it. If Alabama can shoot threes, not turn the ball over, and UConn comes out and shoots how they did against last game, which I don't think it'll be as that bad, but if they're kind of off early, Alabama is a team right now that is dripping in confidence. And if you give them a little leeway, a little hope early, Alabama can run with that. Yeah, look, the first five minutes we know is always crucial in any game. You know, people say, oh, well, hey, you remember UConn was only beating Illinois by five at halftime. Then they go on a 30-0 run, which is just insanity to start the second half. I agree with you, Mark Sears, he's, he's the catalyst. He's, he's the guy that makes it go, especially when they need it the most. But I just almost feel like everybody has to play the best game that they've played. Yeah. Like everybody from Alabama has to. Like it has to go damn near perfect for Alabama to win this game. And I wonder, the question now becomes, if Alabama plays the best they can possibly play as a team and UConn plays the best they can possibly play as a team, I don't think Bama's beating UConn. No. It has to be a combination of yeah. Bama playing out of their minds and UConn can even play kind of well and Alabama will have a chance. That's what Which is a about. familiar concept to Alabama fans. Alabama finds themselves in this game how most teams find themselves so, against Alabama exactly right. on the football field. Exactly most right. of the time we come in here and say, you got to play perfect and then get lucky. And that's kind of what they're dealing with here. I mean, yes, Mark Sears, the best player on your team, one of the best players in the SEC, has to step up and have his best game. Uh, Pringle has to bow up down low. You need all the role players to show up. And then, like uh, Dragon said, not turn the basketball over, which they had 10 turnovers against North Carolina, which I was impressed by, especially how fast both yeah. of those teams mm -hmm. move. And that's still their most impressive win of the tournament. It, it is, and, and Blaine's right. UConn doesn't turn people over a lot. But... Yep, that's one. I almost did. Yeah, I saw UConn, you almost did. it. UConn yeah. doesn't turn people over a lot, but what is a good remedy to kind of balance that out? They don't turn the ball over a lot, right? It's one thing if, if you're not forcing turnovers and you're turning the ball over. It's another thing if you look at the end of the game and the turnovers are kind of somewhat similar, and they're both down. One, because UConn doesn't force a lot, but UConn also doesn't turn the ball over. So I... Again, and it's one basketball game. It's two 20-minute halves. To me, the key for Bama, I think it's Grant Nelson. I, that's, that was the guy against North Carolina that was able to really push them over the finish with Baycott, being able to drive. Mm -hmm. Guys had to alter their shots at the rim. Now, you know, Klingon's bigger than Baycott. I think it's kind of a, a little bit of a different animal. And R.J. Davis went 0 from 9 from 3. I don't think Was he 0 for 9? 0 for 9 from 3, which you're just not going to win that way. I still feel good about UConn at minus 12, right? We did our, like you said, previous predictions and bets. And I love the over at 160 because I don't think Bama can stop UConn offensively. Even if UConn wants to do what, what you know Purdue was doing, hey, just give it down to the monster, right? Let them roam around the village and just rip villagers apart and set it on fire. But they can also work the ball inside and out. The double down low, Flaming Dragon, that's... That's the decision you got to make. You know, it's on both sides, really. What do you do down low when they're on offense? And what do you, uh, what do, you do when you're on offense? Are you going to stretch out? Are you going to play five out? If you leave Pringle... Pringle can't shoot. And Gre uh, that's why Grant Nelson. I think Grant Nelson's going to... Grant Nelson's got to play the five? Gonna, I think so. If that's me, I know I'm not winning down low. I know I'm not, okay? And if I'm Alabama, who am I? I am a running and shooting threes basketball team. Mm -hmm. 
So why not do that to the max efficiency yeah, by I keeping Grant Nelson outside? And that gives guys like Mark Sears, it's almost impossible to guard Mark Sears one-on-one. Yeah. Drive him to the paint. So if you move Klingon out, right, that's going to open the paint. And if you drive, someone has to come. All right, someone has to come, and that's when, that's when you run the kick. That's when you pass out. Five out, boom, boom, boom. You're not going to beat UConn down low. And I'm not saying UConn's bad on defense. Uh, no, I'm not no, saying no, they're, no, four, they're, not. they're four when it comes to efficiency on defense. A very well played defense team. They just turn, don't turn the ball over. But it's going to be really interesting to see the way Nate Oates approached this game schematically. Well, if you put Grant Nelson at the five, and you let Grant Nelson go one-on-one against Klingon. Klingon is going to kill this man. Yeah, so no, you're sitting here saying, "What? Well, I, I don't know. know. No, oh, I, I do don't know. know. It's a lot Grant. different bringing the center out on that three-point line than, than trying to get that guy in the paint and do it. No, He's so athletic, I think, though. I, yeah, you like, can beat him off. That's a first step. Klingon can do That's a first Klingon. step thing. But he doesn't shoot a lot. No, but like he's not going to have to. He will walk. I'm, Here's I'm what talk, will happen. I'm talking about when Bama's on offense. See, that's again, but yeah. this is basketball. You got to realize yeah. it's both at the same time. It's not football. Well, I'm talking about one. the double team, too. Well, again, he's still going to be out in the court, Blaine. That's my point. If he plays offense, he's going to have to play defense. Yes. You can't stop the game and sub guys in whenever you, you change. Now, there's a million media timeouts. My point is are you saying, which I don't think you're wrong, mm-hmm. I don't think this is a bad idea. What I'm saying is there's, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. What you have to hope then is that Klingon just misses the ball around the rim. But the scariest part of that is Klingon backing Grant Nelson's ass down for a whole half, and Grant Nelson gets four he's fouls. He's going to do the half. same thing to Nick Pringle. But Nick Pringle, I think, has a little more. He's a little more athletic than Grant Nelson's. I think he's a little scrappier than Grant Nelson is. If there's anybody that has a chance to remotely even get close to slowing down Klingon, knocking the ball out of his mm-hmm. hands on the way up, denying passes, being able to front him and jump and actually it's intercept Pringle. that pass, it's Pringle. It's Pringle, so but that's it's the also, decision you have to make. Another thing is, regardless of who could guard him better, uh, if if Pringle gets three or four fouls on him early, like what you're talking about throughout the first half because Klingon just had his way, it doesn't hurt you as bad on the offensive end because you're not putting Grant Nelson in foul trouble that early in the game. True. Yeah, it's this is a problem with UConn. Like, <laughs> Like you're gonna have Again. to double, you're gonna have to double old boy no matter what. Like Nick Pringle's not gonna save you in this game. Like I promise oh, you. Oh no, no, not. nobody's saying that. You're going yeah, yeah. it's either Nick Pringle, Grant Nelson, anybody you have on that bench, you're going to have to double that guy. So do you play the game of? Do you play the game of listen? Klingon gets the ball down low. Let's say Pringle's at the five. Let's say Grant Nelson's at the five. Do you just say, we're gonna double him? UConn's got to hit threes. See, what do you what do you do when it comes to if you're answer. playing an offense and you have an elite receiver on the outside? I am making you beat me with somebody else in this in this football game. All right. If you can beat me with somebody else with UConn, I'm not losing to your best player. All right. I'm gonna do everything I can to stop that guy. I'm gonna make him beat me. Uh, I, and, and you watch it was the same thing if you watch North Carolina. Play I don't Bama. think that's wrong. They, they, and it was weird because you saw Nate Oates. There's a lot of guys on North Carolina team that came out who did not shoot well from three uh, point the entire year that were hitting threes early. Nate Oates' decision strategy in that game was we're going to play off of certain guys and help the post with yeah. Baycott. Yeah, but again, like, but you shoots have a shooters. lot better. Like, than the North problem with Klingon is, as opposed to Baycott, not that Baycott couldn't hit a mid range jump shot. But Klingon can legitimately shoot the ball. Like, not from, he doesn't take a lot of threes. I watched him shoot one three, I think, against Illinois. It didn't look bad coming out of his hand, to be honest. But Klingon's game, I think, extends a little bit further than Baycott's a- as you go out. But the offensive end for UConn is, is the least of where I'd be worried yeah. if I was UConn. It's on defense. Okay. How do we, if, if we somewhat shut down the three, Bama's going to lose. Like, if Bama, I think the number I put it at in my mind, I think Bama's got to hit 16 threes at least to win mm. this game. At least 16 threes. So, Let's see how many they hit against North Carolina? They hit 15? 11. They hit 11? They hit 22 <clears throat> against somebody earlier in the year. But even if they hit those threes, if you can't, if you take 40 threes and you hit 16 of them, that's great. But if they're down there just turning around and dunking the ball, right, with clinging, it's just more consistent baskets. That's where I think UConn gets you. Like, I think UConn just, it's so consistent and efficient on offense. Take the defense out for a second. It's so efficient and consistent on offense, and they don't go through these huge scoring ruts that even if you make a couple wild plays or you get hot for four or five possessions in a row, it's just like gravity, man. It's like over time. It's almost like Georgia, when they decide to run the ball, like 
yeah, you may hit an 80-yard touchdown every now and then against Georgia, but they're going to go eight, nine, ten plays, nine, ten plays and on scoring drives. It's just, that's what's tough about it, man. Mm. But I tell you what's not tough, if you're going to bet on the Final Four, yeah. is who you're going to use to bet. Yes. And that's our friends over at betonline.ag. If you live in an area you know, where sports gambling is legal, this needs to be your go-to. Best sports book out there, easy to navigate website, uh, on-time payments. I'm telling you, this, this is a creme de la creme. Uh, and if you didn't join the uh, Bet Online March Madness Bracket Challenge, I'm sorry for you because the winner is going to receive $50,000. But they're always having fantastic challenges like that, things you can enter. And if there's a spread out there, it doesn't matter if it's baseball, basketball, hula hooping, that thing where you take the mallet and hit the ball in the front yard with the rest of the rich people, betonline.ag has you covered. So go to betonline.ag to place your bets today. Use promo code BOOSTER, that's B-O-O-S-T-E-R, and you get a 50% instant deposit bonus of up to 1000 bucks. You put in 1000 bucks, they give you a $500. That's betonline.ag. Use promo code BOOSTER. BetOnline, the options are endless. But so is the fun. <laughs> but also, don't bet on you winning this round of Flaming Dragon. There's what? You said what did I say the second time? You said it earlier, but it was heated, and we didn't want to interrupt you. I thought you already penalized me for that one. No, you, you said it uh, We'll run back the tape. We'll run back the tape. Skylar, look at that for me, Skylar. Quick dub. Yeah, Skylar, wow, look at that for me. quick dub. That thing is over early. He's the one who noticed it first. Yeah. This is basketball. you got to realize yeah. it's both at the same time. It's not football. Well, I'm talking about the double team, too. Well, again, he's still going to be out in the court, Blaine. That's my point. Blaine, that's my point. Blaine, that's my point. Blaine, that's my point. Skylar, I don't. I need you to be my companion. Good job, Skylar. Oh. Thank you for being true to who you are. I need you to be. I need you to be my companion here. Yeah, oh, you're, you're a beautiful good. butterfly you, flying against the wind. Yeah, Skylar. you are a beautiful butterfly, Skylar. That's for sure. All right, what's the second one we got? We have there? another game. Speaking about Justine back there, NC State, which we have an awesome basketball right here, thanks to our friend Brock, is going to take good on Zach Eady and Purdue. Real Pacific Rim situation. DJ Burns. <sighs> what Zach happens Eady. when the a movable object meets the unstoppable other object. I don't know. We're going to find out. Uh, here's where I find this game fascinating. Zach Eady is seven foot four, right? He's, God, why do I sound like Kamala Harris? I'm just saying general things. I don't think Zach Eady's going to be able to back down DJ Burns, who may not be seven foot four height wide, vertically, but horizontally, he's damn near seven foot four. I don't think Zach Eady's going to be able to back him down in the post. The way that he's been able to back, I mean, even Adu from Tennessee, he was able to work him low, help draw those fouls, everybody they threw at him. Like, Zach Eady's going to have to make a lot of hook shots in this game. I think he's going to have to make a lot of turnaround, you know, what I call them tangerine throws, because that's what it looks like when Zach Eady throws the basketball at the rim. And I don't think you have to double him. That's the biggest thing. We were just talking about this Alabama game. I don't think you have to double Zach Eady in this game. And if you don't have to double Zach Eady in this game, yeah. that changes mm -hmm. everything you do defensively. Because even when Tennessee was doubling Zach Eady, Purdue's guards, guards were struggling to make threes. Even Gillis, who's short, shooting like 48%. But I don't think with DJ... Now, offensively, NC State is going to take a hit. Because DJ Burns scores a lot in crucial moments for NC State, if you've noticed. It's not just how he scores, but when he scores. But if I'm an NC State fan, I would love to have something close to a stalemate with Zach Eady and DJ Burns and let the guards decide who wins the game. Mm -hmm. with, with Horn and, and the guys at NC State yeah. has in the way they're playing. I th that's why, guys, the more I look at this game, and people say I hate Purdue, I don't hate Purdue. I'm just wondering when it's coming. Because Zach Eady scored 40 against Tennessee. He scored 40 against them. He has a double-double in his last 19 of 21 games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's a monster. But Look, I Burns, hate to break the news, guys. Zach Eady can back down DJ Burns. I don't think he can. I don't think he can. A 7'4", 320 but, but pounds. But consistently, I mean, yes. every DJ single time, Burns is all six game. Foot nine, 355 pounds. DJ Burns is 6'9", 292 pounds. I, Not just, I mean, like, of course that, he can do he it once. He ain't 290 pounds. They got him 275. There's Zach no Eady? DJ Burns. Way, DJ oh, DJ I Burns gave him weight. 75. Oh. There's no way. I you gave him weight. You see him sitting in that chair at Applebee's? <laughs> I saw that line. I'm saying, around. like, look. Can he do it the entire game, though? And that's the difference in the game. I think a lot of it... A lot of it's going to come down to foul calling, how the, how the game's ref. That's true. And I think a lot of it is winning 
It's getting Zach Eady off the spot before he gets the ball. Mm -hmm. It's pushing Zach Eady out of the paint before he gets – if he gets the ball on the low block or anywhere close to it, you're done. Agree with that because you've already done your work. You you're did done. your work early. DJ, yes. DJ Bird, exactly. He has to win early in this game. You have to push Zach Eady out of the paint early, and that comes down to refereeing. Well, see, this is another – I don't want to put the cart too far ahead of the horse, but this is what I find fascinating about the UConn-Purdue matchup that we possibly could get. Yeah. DJ, 99.9% .9 of the players that Zach Eady plays against in his position, you cannot front front Zach Eady. They're just going to throw it over you. He's going to catch it and dunk the ball in the basket. DJ Burns cannot front, like be in the front of Zach Eady, like while the other person's dribbling the ball. Klingon can, because he's seven foot two, and he can jump up and go get that ball. That's what I find fascinating. But Klingon's a little bit slighter built than DJ Burns. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're going to see is DJ Burns just say, listen, I'm standing here. You're, I would not be shocked at all, fellas, if Zach Eady gets a little bit frustrated because he can't back DJ down far enough, and then you see a couple offensive fouls from Zach Eady. Because DJ Burns' mental game is oh. very, very – his, his basketball IQ is very, very high. So I think Zach Eady may be more dangerous passing – out of the interior of this game, which you've talked about a lot. Yes, uh, and that's another interesting thing about the double team, because Zach Eady has improved so much with passing out of the double team and oftentimes passing out of the triple team. Yeah. And what we've been saying is, okay, well, can Purdue's guards hit threes at a high enough clip to win six in a row, which you need to do to win the tournament? But another interesting thing that I've been watching, the more and more that I see Purdue play is, you know, it doesn't, passing out of the double team for Edie doesn't always lead to a three point attempt. A lot of times, what it leads to is a slash. You know, yeah, the numbers cut, are on Edie. Yeah. A slash, and then the ball gets back to Edie, Edie when people try to recover. Exactly right. I mean, he was feasting a lot of times against Tennessee, and Tennessee even did a great job at times of getting their hands on the basketball before he could get it Those up. Guards they had with several seat. defensive steals, yeah. and he still had 40. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so if you don't have to double him, to Jake's point, if, if DJ Burns can at least Keep, hold his own, I mean, Edie could still have 25 points, but is that enough to win the game for Purdue? Then you're at least giving yourself a chance to keep the perimeter secured. Well, is Flaming Dragon's point probably the most important in this game? Because I think it is. It's how the game's officiated. True. And it's not It's not saying that Zach Edie doesn't need to get fouls called on him. All we have said is that if you're going to call those fouls when Zach Edie is on offense, right, where there's that contact, because I don't want them to not call fouls because he's big. You should ref the game the way the game is, is written, right? I know Zach Eady's a little bit of an anomaly, but a foul is still a foul, which, you know, saying that today is whatever. But if Zach Eady commits fouls on the other end, you have got to call it. Or if, if Purdue is committing those same fouls that the other team, that NC State's doing defensively, you have to call it. That's where I think Tennessee had, had a gripe. Not that they called so many fouls with Zach Eady offensively. It's that they didn't call those same type of fouls when Tennessee had the ball. And that's not even talking about Zach Eady. That's everybody on, on Purdue when I thought they fouled Tennessee. That was the biggest gripe that I had. The line stayed pretty much the same from earlier in the week. Right now, minus nine Purdue and over under 146. So I like Purdue minus nine. You do? I do. I, don't th I think Purdue might kill these guys. I, I tell you what. I'm, I'm going to pick NC State. Money line? I'm going to pick NC Outright. State. Money line. Plus 340. I'm going to take NC State money line. I love House it. House money. <laughs> House money. Right? You're coming off a game where the officials caught a lot of hell. Tennessee and Purdue. Do they try and, and they do this, they're human beings. Maybe bobblehead referee. Do they try and, and even it back out? But there's just something about NC State. I think Kevin, Kevin Keats may have done a deal with the devil, man. You want to talk about the clutchest coaching job ever? Like, is there another sport where you can go from fired to a raise? quicker than college basketball. They were going to fire Coach Keats before the ACC tournament. They win the ACC tournament, make the NCAA tournament. Oh, his job is safe because you beat North Carolina and you beat Duke in the ACC tournament. Then you go to the NCAA tournament and you run this bad boy all the way to the Final Four and you take out Duke again. He's probably going to get a raise. Yeah. Is there another sport that that could happen that quickly? I don't think so. I'll split the is. difference between you. I'll take Purdue to win, but NC State covers the, the nine If points. DJ Burns gets two fouls early like he did in that last game, they're going to run out of the gym. Mm. They're going to get we'll run see. out the gym. It's the name of the game. Name of the game. All right, a couple other things we have to get to here. The Bills trades uh, wide receiver Stephon Diggs to the Texans. 
to the Texans, man. And it sounds like they got they get, they also gave away a fifth round and a sixth round pick in 2024 for a second round pick next year. So, so Coney, t- tell our audience just because I want everybody to understand the, how crazy this is. So the Bills gave Stephon traded Stephon Diggs to the Texans for a second round pick in 2025. Is that what you said? Here, I'll read it out right here. This is the Buffalo Bills are trading digs to the Houston Texans along with a 2024 sixth rounder and a 2025 fifth rounder. To the so Texans. The, to the Texans, a 2025 fifth rounder. In exchange, the Bills get back a second round selection in 2025, which you'd have to imagine is going to be a late second rounder. The Texans just made the playoffs with C.J. Stroud in year one. They've only added more pieces around him. I can't imagine this is the very first pick that's going to happen in mm. the second round. I don't know. So, so after seeing that, t- to me, it's one of two things with the bill, with, with this trade situation. One, somebody in the Texans organization has pictures of somebody in the Bills organization doing something awful. <laughs> no, number two, scenario two, Stephon Diggs was that bad in the locker room. He was that bad in the locker room. There's no, there's no, ha- ha- the part that probably blows my mind the most isn't just, that you got a second round 2025 pick in return. It said you not only gave them Stefan Diggs, you gave them two other picks with Stefan Diggs. So you would have to land on this guy was that the money, they had the money to pay him. I don't think this is a, a salary thing. I saw some people say, oh, well, they want to see if Josh Allen can do it without Stefan Diggs. W- what? What? <laughs> like that makes no, that makes no sense at all. I, I'm just to the point now where this man must have been that bad for the locker room. That's, I, I don't know how you take anything else from that. He's no. not over the hill, David. No. Right? We're not talking about Larry I mean, now he's a, a 1,200 yard receiver last year. Like, I, I don't know. Did he I have mean, 1,200 last year? Yeah. I mean, it's your best receiver for the last couple of years. And you don't have another guy that you feel that's just going to come fill that. What, Gabe Davis? Gabe Davis already he's left. He's in Jack- Jack- Jacksonville now. Yeah, he's right? a Jaguar. So, like, if you're, you're now. On offense, I mean, obviously, you have the 28th pick in the first round. You got to take a receiver, receiver there. Yeah. We kind of talked about that earlier. I think Adonan Mitchell from Texas would be a great piece. Um, this is a deep receiver class, but there's no logical explanation other than he must have been that bad in the locker room because you got absolutely hosed in this trade. Mm-hmm. And there's no way you don't know that. There's no yeah. way the guy yeah, yeah. who's doing the trades for the Bills is like, this is great for us. Somebody said it's worth it. Do it. Somebody, somebody up there in the Bills organization said, you know what? And the Texans knew it. That's the thing. I think word's out on this cat because mm-hmm. word travels you know, around. And listen, I don't know Stephon personally. And I think it's great for Stephon. No, I, I think it could be Play good for him. for D'Amico him. Ryan? Hell yeah. D'Amico Ryan's in the type of coach who's just no, going to let you no, come in and be no. a problem. No, no, but like who? Somebody in the Texans organization, uh, uh, Texans organization knew that the Bills were trying to, it was a fire sale to get rid of Stephon Diggs. Like it's a fire. This is one of those things, and, and the Bills were ready to get rid of them. It just feels like that show Storage Wars, where like, you know, they send the guy and they're like, man, I just got a good feeling about what's in the storage thing, so I'm gonna pay $200. And then you open it, and it's a chest full of gold next to a Maserati. Then you could just cut him. I mean, unless you just think like, okay, if we give a fifth and a sixth, that's worth the that's worth the second. I don't know. It's just hard. Yeah. To, there's there's I mean, no other explanation, guys. There's not. not it's not, not like the Bills are in a rebuild phase. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. Like they're one of the few franchises who's in the in the highest win now mentality. I mean, you have Josh Allen. Yeah, where is contract? Well, you got to go now. Where is it? Like that's what I'm like. Where's Josh Allen thinking right now? Like what's what what's going through his head either right now? Because like <laughs> you had nobody around you. You have no, you're an NFL team, you're the Bills, and right now your best skill player, other than James Cook, is probably Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, I agree with that. It's probably Dalton K- Kincaid, and you have nobody else around. Like, Josh Allen is, when we've harped on this with Josh Allen, will he ever get over the Patrick Mahomes hump? Well, right? What they're doing now is not helping. Well, here's the, the thing you gotta ask yourself, too. Are the, are the Bills about to trade up and go get one of these? Like, ones. Hmm. Like, are they about and to even trade if up? you do, then you have one. Some of the teams you're going to have to beat. Got no, you have Tony, one, I'm and he's you, a buddy. rookie. Uh, Co- yeah, Cody, I'm with, I'm with you, bud, but 
You, you got none right yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and, and you, look you, at the Texans. I mean, just assuming that Stefan Diggs doesn't become a name, cancer name, in the locker name. room. I mean, you're going to put him up with Nico Collins yeah. the, with the way that he's been playing and recently. Tank Dell. And the, uh, Tank Dell. I mean. Dalton Schultz. The, I tell you what. Uh, I'm just, why am I becoming a Texans fan? Yeah, I mean, and see, again, we got to look into whether C.J. Stroud's legitimately going to have a sophomore slump. I yeah, mean, that's, that's, a, yeah. that's a real thing. But, I mean, Damian Pierce in the backfield? Dude, still it's, there? the vibes are so good around the Texans right now. That's why I wonder, you better have a strong-ass culture in your locker room if you're going to bring in somebody that, a really good player, but it seems like there's some, there's something there. There's something there. Um, could it be somewhere him and Josh were button heads and they weren't getting rid of Josh? Like, it could be that too. Uh, I mean, I just, I don't know. It's tough not, not being in there. Uh, a couple other things here. It sounds like Rajon Rondo has officially retired. I think he wanted to keep playing, but he just announced, like, yeah, I'm, I'm done with the NBA. Uh, do we have a, a clip? Because I, I saw a pass earlier from Ray John Rondo. I don't know what level this was. If this was is him it, in is college. This, is or, that Kentucky? Play this. No. Maybe. It was high school. No, this was high school. High school. <laughs> that was just a random <laughs> passing clip I saw from Ray John Rondo. One of the best ball handlers. Yeah. Do you know? Ever in the NBA? Yeah. How good you have to be to make it as far in basketball as Rajon Rondo did in today's era, and you can't shoot mm. at guard. We're not talking about Zach Eady. We're not talking about some Siberian cave troll, right? Or some seven, other seven foot five guy, a point guard that can, like, can't shoot a lick. Like Rondo can't, in the grand scheme of the no. NBA, Rondo can't shoot at all, at all. But God almighty, is that man a knife with the ball? And he's got alien vision, so just like you saw in that clip. But it just, the anticipation, it, it's almost like Daredevil, right? The man can't see, but every other sense, it's mm -hmm. magnified by like, a, yeah. by like a billion. Like it's almost got like echolocation going out there. Remember when he came on the scene in Boston? Like right after yeah. the big three, like right when they were having... They had headband? The three there. Had the headband. Cold, man. Cold. Um, he was cold at Kentucky, too. Mm -hmm. All right. A couple other things here. Um, I've been getting hounded for talking about the, the Frozen Four, uh, college hockey, because Michigan had a huge win over Michigan State the other day to make it to the Frozen Four. So now that's going to be Boston College against Michigan, and then Denver up against Boston University. Of course, Boston College and Boston University sure. both make it. But there's a chance, Director Trey was telling me this, there's a chance that Denver and Michigan could meet up in the championship, and they both are tied at nine championships apiece for most all time. That could be interesting. Story. Okay. Very, very interesting. I always, I, I find it fascinating in, in um, like lacrosse and hockey in college when you have these schools that you never really hear about. Even in college basketball, it's we cool. hear about St. Peter's and Duquesne on these. But like you know, Boston University and and you know these these smaller one, Denver. Quinnip, Quinnipiac was in the Elite Eight. Yeah, you love to see it. Do we have run this clip here. This was was Dude, uh, a win over gasoline. Michigan State the other day. Let's play it. Difference making pass to give the Wolverines the two mm. goal line. Come on, man. Four Wait, is that's Denver as good the as it gets? Huh? Denver's not the Wolverines too, right? No, they're they're the. Uh, they're the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Pioneers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're the Nuggets. I was like, well, they, I was wondering if Trey was back there. That, that makes sense. Look, I'll, I'll watch. I'd love me some high level hockey. Hell yeah, man. Which I can't wait. Preds in the playoffs. Smashville, why is Jake paying attention now? Why is Jake paying attention? I love Remember? it. All right. So we got paying attention. There's a lot of stuff out there about you online. Let's be honest. Yeah, you, right? Can't believe You specifically. More than you thought. There was more about me, way more. Old addresses, phone numbers. It, it's actually, it's actually scary. Like, because we live in such a digital age, the footprint that you leave without even really knowing it, and the way these data brokers and hackers can get your information, and then they sell it. Right? It's basically a market of names and information. Uh, it would absolutely shock if you knew how much uh, was out there about you. So it's time to take control, and it's time to protect your personal information and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. All right, they deleted me, and I'm better for it. And now at a special discount for our listeners, today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash crane and use promo code crane at checkout. Remember, crane spelled C-R-A-I-N, not spelled like that stupid bird. So the only way to get 20% off 
is to go to joindeleteme.com, J-O-I-N-D-E-L-E-T-E.me.com slash C-R-A-I-N, enter code C-R-A-I-N at checkout. Joindeleteme.com slash crane with promo code crane. You can delete all the bad stuff that's on the line. All right, fellas. Show God. Love it. I Final screwed four. up, David. I sc- what we have? Oh, we got we got some Friday reactions. Friday, re- let's react. With it's a Braves fan. I already like it. Oh God, I can't wait to be disappointed. Let's play it. Tell me, how do I throw it? Oh yeah, go get up out of there. Run flat. Go. Oh my God. All right, go back to formation. Go back to formation. Is he Can helping he somebody me? play? Go to. He's screen share. Right, That's gun. what he is. Uh, go to. No. He's left. coaching. Go he's slot. coaching oh, somebody. Left. Go left. Left trigger. We got young I Eric Bannemi in there we're drawing up and play. Right. Mesh action, okay. Now, hold R2. You, you gonna have He's X a- and triangle on short routes, all right? And then. I, I don't mind that. I love this. X, X, X. Dude, stop yeah. running. Is that run so far yep. back. First okay. down. Yeah, yeah. Now, now do your tight end attack. You see, you got now all those trophies right there. Yeah. yeah. That's why. I respect hey. it. Yo, running back might be open. He might. Okay, yo, running, running. That's good. That's good. I've never seen this. That's good. That's yeah, good. I see Big T. <laughs> Did y'all see so the picture of? No, no, no. That's so a coach in the that's making, right there. Bro. Oh man, he's already a coach. That's a coach in the making. Did you Did you guys see when the two brothers were playing each other and they were having to play each other in NCAA football on one TV and one of the brothers was sitting Indian style and the other brother put like a cardboard box on top of his head that split mm-hmm. the screen in half oh, so yeah. he couldn't see the plays he was picking. I saw that. Absolutely. It's a real thing. Why yeah. do we win both world wars? Because stuff like that. I need this kid coaching O-line in 20. Hell yeah. For sure. All right, let's play this. Go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Run. I believe in him. Run. He can make it. Run. Run. It's like what happens when you get in the it's nest so on Resident Evil. He can make it. <laughs> Make Run. it, make it, make it, make it. Oh! oh. It's the second hit. That hurt, brother. Here's the question, though. Go back to the beginning of this. Go back to the beginning of this. Because oh, I, I, I want to see something. How high are these things off the ground? Play it one more time. I mean, boys, how are you getting up? It would just drag you along, wouldn't it? Like, that's so low to the ground. I mean, you're getting smoked. If he didn't fall outside oh, of the oh, gate like this, damn, right? Then that could have, it's bad. It's not good, but that could have been tragic. Absolutely tragic. It's one of those things where you either hit your head and it's become absolutely idiotic, or you hit yeah. your head and you become a, you can hear dolphins. Yeah, why is Professor X wheeling his ass Ooh. up to my driveway? We should reach out to him. Because I need to know what picks to take. Well, yes. yeah, I need to. Know, I want him to know I'm on his side. It's like, whenever he goes bright burn. And even if he gets them all wrong, then we would know. Yeah. Fade I'm saying betting. If you don't know every time, then you know every time. It's just how it works. But I'll tell you what's not tragic. You guys joining us on a Flaming Dragon Friday. I blew it, but don't worry. Don't worry. Big L. Yeah. Big coming dub. Back, back like Jordan. All right. We're in the 4 5 next week. Jordan That's and Big announcements, too, about the show. Uh, that we're really, really excited about. Again, shout out to everybody at YAF down there in Florida and in general. Hopefully, we can keep doing this. Had an absolute ball down there, gentlemen. I think we can all agree there. Yes. And like this week, we're going, going. Gone.